1959, I decided to to go to Michigan State. I was asked to go up there and start a jazz program there, so I decided to go up there, and I began to consider who I might get to take over the program in North Texas. By this time, it had become firmly established and was uh, really a leader of such programs throughout the nation, and I didn't want to see it go down the drain. Well, of course, I knew quite a few musicians who were qualified from the musical standpoint to run the program, but that was a that was, and I suppose still is, a rather strange, not strange, but it takes a special type of person to handle that program there. You have to have someone who has enough musical ability as a performer to earn the respect of the staff there, the faculty at North Texas State. You also have to have someone who knows his music and can talk uh, about the European style with the faculty there, or they'll have little respect for you, thinking you know only jazz. Uh, you have to have someone who is a diplomat and can get along in spite of the fact that most of them don't want or didn't want to get along. Uh, you also have to have someone who is an excellent organizer and who can get along with the jazz students. You see, it's no easy thing to determine which person will play first trumpet, which will play second trumpet, or which will play lead alto or second alto, and convince them that you have made the right decision as to who will play what. So it takes uh, a rather special person to handle these basic areas, and there are always a multitude of small decision to be made every day regarding uh, the operation of the program, where we're going to, where the band would play, the actual programming of the various uh, events. All of this sort of narrowed the field down. Well, my first choice was for Leon Breeden, who was the band director at Grand Prairie at that time. I'd known Leon for a number of years and had the highest regard for his musicianship. And uh, so I went over and asked Leon if he'd be interested in taking over this job. And uh, he indicated that he would, he would be interested. And after I approached him on the matter, I sort of backed off and talked to him about a half a day about why he should not take the job, telling him about all of the problems that I had had regarding financing the band and the attitude of the staff and all the, well, the problems that I've enumerated <clears throat> throughout this tape, uh, they were still there. They were still out in the annex out there, and the annex was not in any better condition than when we took it over. And uh, uh, you could not use, the band director would not allow you to use any of the school instruments. The bass and bone players had to own their own instruments and so on, you know, all of this. So I spent quite a bit of time trying to argue Leon out of the job, although hoping at the same time that he would take the job because I felt that, that he could do the job. I felt that he was, he certainly is an excellent musician and uh, he's a, a very intelligent, sharp person. And I felt that he could cope with the, both the jazz musicians and with the, the faculty at, at North Texas. And as it turned out, he was the ideal, or is, the ideal man for the job. <clears throat> he's done, well, as the program speaks for itself, he's just done a, a tremendous job, of, just an outstanding job. My concern is that he may be overdoing himself, but anyway, Leon's handling of the program since I left has only enhanced my own relationship with the program because wherever I go now, what, 15, 18 years later, if I mention that I was connected with the program in North Texas, then all at once I'm a more important person because that program today is a fine program and the 
and Leon is due the credit, but I still uh, reap some of the reflected glory from having been there. So uh, the program still uh, is making me look good, and uh, I have I have to thank Leon and the fellows in the band up there for for the splendid job that they have and are doing. <laughs>